What's up? What's up, Tony? A special, howdy, howdy. a special midweek. How do you do? Right. <laughs> oh, you know what? I don't have my engraved cup, but I do got a cup. I got a cup. Yes, yeah, I got the same cup I had last Ding. week. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie. I fucking hustled home to get here because I knew I had to take the garbage out. And then once I was putting the garbage out, I was like, oh, the the secondary garbage that has all the dog poop in it. I got to dump that in there, you know, kind of thing. And then I like ran in. And she's like. You know David's a huge Falcons fan. I was like, yeah, I know. She's like, why don't you wear something that has your Falcons gear? I was like, shit, I got to change. <laughs> I know. I put <laughs> I put on my my dual shirt. It's so weird because I started off with like Falcon stuff, and then I was like, this is the only one I really have anymore that I like that fits and stuff. And then it just ended up going like full Michigan. Now I got my Michigan. <laughs> I was like, okay, now this is I'm going in the wrong direction now. Well, see, <laughs> now I need a Falcons bracelet. <laughs> you can tell the last time I bought a jersey because all of my jerseys for people on the Falcons are <laughs> no not. longer on the fucking Falcons. <laughs> They've been gone for years. <laughs> I'm slowly getting my Halloween stuff ready. I've had Ooh. my crow up here on this uh, tree for a while. I've now got Sean and Ed from Shaun of the Dead. Nice. My pop vinyls. They were my Halloween collection will slowly start growing um, I as I it. figure out where the hell I put them. I swear, Tony, if at some point during October, if you don't end the podcast with to quote the Raven, nevermore, I'm going to be really <laughs> upset. <laughs> Just putting that well, out I mean, there. Especially because I've got a Raven tattooed on my forearm. <laughs> right. There it, we go. It just makes sense. Um, destiny <laughs> guys we want to thank you so much for joining us uh obviously my name is ricky hayes beautiful wife karina hayes sitting here next to me um and then we've got tony lance and we are the challenge fandom podcast look at him doing intros i this know time. fire it's been weeks. I know. fire just in case y'all forgot just in case you know <laughs> if you if you haven't heard of us you about to no <laughs> you you gonna learn today <laughs> you gonna learn today of course we're the challenge fandom podcast we want to Thank you guys so much for tuning in for was this week ten of exit interviews? I think. Yeah, I think it's. I think Episode it's the last. I don't know what. So. We're getting it's close. The, it's the last. This is the last week of the sh- because they said on the next week on and the, it's the final next oh, week. So yeah. I'm like, hold hold the freaking phone because there's still like 10, 11, 11 people left, something like that. I'm like, dang, yeah. this is a big group of finalists, but. That's the, but that's the other part too that I was thinking because I was like, oh, there's so many finalists. Why is there so many finalists? Usually we'll have like, you know, three guys, three girls, something like that. But there's so many finalists. And I'm like, this kind of makes me feel that all the finalists are going to be put forth to the tournament of whatever. And that's why they're taking yeah. so many to the, to the final. That's what of, I was thinking too. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking that whoever is in next week, um, because it, I, I vaguely remember them saying something about another girl's elimination at the beginning yeah, there's of a the night final. Fi- next there's week. a night date, a night daily. So I guess a night, yeah. but a night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like well, never mind. Not gonna make that joke. Um, Don't. Yeah, let's just leave that right there. I can't, I can't cut it. So no, I know, I know. But <laughs> guys, thank you so much for tuning in uh, today. You know, spoiler alert: we're gonna be talking to David. In case you guys didn't watch the episode, if you didn't watch the episode, why, why the are fuck you are you listening to, to our exit interview? <laughs> Go watch the fucking show. Go watch the episode. <laughs> Come back, listen to this. No, um, yeah. But, Ugh. you know, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm upset. I've been rooting for David since season 20 of Big Brother when he got the short end of the stick and was like kicked out of the house right away. Didn't even get to participate, it was really. Such a weird twist, too. And then watching him in 22 with All Stars, you could tell he came in with not really the best mind frame for the game. Um, you know, and we're going to probably dive into that a little bit. We only get a short amount of time, but right. Um, we actually I, get a little bit extra time today. Yeah, we're what fifteen minutes? Yeah, I think instead so. Of the seven, so, yeah. they're they're yeah. giving us double today, so that's nice. But my thing is, is seeing him on this show has enhanced my feelings on the character of the person. Right, like it just kind of yeah. reinforced that, but it completely changed my perspective on him as a competitor, and. You know, before I thought, you know, he'd be good, but, you know, is he going to be able to beat anyone? And then watching him go in and beat Xavier, winning that daily with Desi, yeah, all of that, you know, it really changed it to this guy. This guy's good. He's got a real shot at if he gets to a final of doing something, doing some damage. Exactly. But unfortunately, you know, we, we're not going to be able to see that until he decides to make a comeback. Do they better bring him back? I, oh, like, I, and I, 
I know we say like every time, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm really sad to see this person go. It sucks, whatever. And we mean it every single time. But I am legitimately sad about this one. I wanted this so bad for David because Mm -hmm. he has performed really well all season. He came out. He surprised everybody, especially if you were, you know, making your judgments based off of the, you know, BB, his experiences on BB and and all of that. You kind of walked in with with thoughts and judgments and expectations and stuff. And for me personally, he completely blew every single one of those out of the water. And I wanted this so bad for him. And so when it came down to David versus Enzo in the fi- in the this final men's elimination, I I didn't even know what to do. Like I didn't even know what to do because I wanted it for Enzo too because I you know, I root hard for Enzo as well. Like I think it's really cool that he has been able to come in and yes, he hasn't done super well in the dailies, but he's been kicking butt in eliminations. So it was just like one of those like struggle things, but I don't know. I just I feel really bad for David. I know how much he wanted it. That moment right before they started the elimination and he was doing like his his pre elimination like confessional, but like live right there. And like he started to kind of like tear up a little bit and he's just like, I want this. I'm going to win this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to win this. Like and he's like kind of tearing up and stuff like, oh, my God, man, it just like tugged on my heartstrings, just like yanked them out of my heart. Like, oh, my God. So I am I am genuinely sad to be talking to David today, like genuinely. Yeah, he's one of my guys, too. He's he's on my team. Yeah, I, he's he was one of the heavy hitters on my team, too. I'm mm-hmm. I'm very happy that he was part of my fantasy draft and that he made it as long as he did. Like I 100 percent would have put money on him being in the final. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 100%. Oh, and yeah. I, mean, I think I said it last week. Like, I think it was last week on the recap that I said that, like, he's built for the challenge. Like, this yeah. is the show that he is built for. Oh, yeah. He's got what it takes and give him a couple of seasons. He's there like 100%. Even give him two. And he is likely at least making the final. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's. How do I want to put this? Okay. I fucking love Danny, and I love that he mentions Kiki every episode. I really do enjoy that, and I love Kiki now. I don't even know Kiki, I, except for like what I see on Instagram, but she seems her. fucking phenomenal. <laughs> she seems like she gives great advice. With that being said... Well, she's a therapist. Yeah, yeah well, it makes sense. <laughs> but with all of that being said, next year, can we make sure David gets more confessionals and mentions uh, than someone that's not on the show? I mean, yeah. I, I, look, it's just... You're you're paying this guy to come out here to perform. At least give him the op, give us the opportunity to learn about this person that's going to be on for over you know ninety percent of the season. I, I, okay, thank you. That's my thing. I would have understood if like he went out like the first couple episodes and they're like, eh, you know, maybe like you know maybe his confessionals weren't you know a lot of his confessionals weren't that great, and so they're like, okay, let's not use them. He goes out early. He is literally here until the very fucking end, until the episode right before the final. And we got like, I don't know, right off the top of my head, I'm sure we'll talk about it on our recap. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. But he did not get very many confessionals like overall through the entire season. I want to say maybe like 15 to 20. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not when you compare it to like. Some people get that per episode. Per episode. Yes. Like last week, I think it was Sarah. She got me like 13 freaking points in just last week's episode. Like. So it's just, it makes no sense to me why he barely got any airtime and he's, he's cute and he's funny and he's good at the game. And I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. You think he's cute? David, he's extremely attractive. Yes. yes, I I think he's cute too. I was just giving you shit. That's all. (laughs) Yes, David, I think you're cute. Mm. Mm. Uh, You know, I do do too for the record. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're all on the same page. He's a good looking man. You cannot deny that. Okay. Regardless of his looks, my thing is, is. He was brought on this show. They chose him to be on this show. Yes. Give us the opportunity to meet and know more about him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I think he got zero confessionals the first two episodes. And then the third episode when he went to elimination, that's when he started getting them. Mm -hmm. But then it was like one here, one per episode here, maybe two here. And it's like, no, man, like, don't get me wrong. I fucking dig Tyson and I dig Sarah and I dig Ben. But they're not the only people playing this game. There yes. are other people yeah. on here that deserve some airtime too. I agree. 
that's just the way I'm, I I view it. And that's also because I'm a bit of a, a bit more of a David fan than I am of, <laughs> you know, some of these other people I was just mentioning. Um, Karina's on I'm challenge actually, stats right now trying to figure I, it out. Yeah. So I'm on challenge stat, at challenge stats on Instagram. Um, they do, obviously they do challenge stats guys. Um, but I am looking at the, um, the season confessional count. And for David, he has gotten 19 confessionals for the entire season. Uh, compared to the top one, which is Sarah with fifty six. Well, that that is also a week behind. That does not factor in this. Yeah. Correct, episode. correct, correct, so. correct. Sorry, yes, this is up to last last episode. They won't have their updated stats up until tomorrow on Friday. Um, but up to last episode, he only had nineteen confessionals through the entire season, um, and and a good majority of those came from one episode from the one episode where. Him and Desi won, and then he got another. He had another good run of confessionals on the one where he was in in the elimination when he won. Yeah. Good question: Who's at the top of the list for season confessionals? Yeah, that would be Sarah with fifty six. Fifty fucking six and through David's, nine episodes. And David's got nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, uh, like, and here just to put this in into perspective, season name mentions. Okay, they they're also keeping a Kiki counter. And again, nothing against Danny and Kiki. We love Danny and Kiki, and I think it's freaking adorable how much he like mentions her and is like it's almost funny at this point. And I love it. But up to last episode, episode nine, Kiki's name had been mentioned on the show thirteen times, and David has nineteen confessionals. Like so, just to put that in perspective, it, they just they did him dirty on not giving him very much airtime for being a cast member that made it almost completely to the end. You know, he made it to the end of the game. He just didn't make it to the final. Um, so, yeah. Ugh. You know what? Yeah. It, and <laughs> you know what? I think it's so much bullshit that I think we should hop in this and give him his 15 Ooh. minutes to shine. Yes, because it is time. We have like Heck yeah. 15 seconds. So let's, let's go. go. Hey, David. How are you? Are Hi. We... Can you hear yes, us? Yes. Sorry. That's You're... all right. <laughs> it's funny because the audio, I guess, because you guys are left and right, but it's your audio setup. So one person's... You're... Atlanta is coming on the left side of my computer and you're coming out of the right side. So I was like, yo, who is what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, we like to keep it, keep people on their toes when they come and visit us. <laughs> you know what I mean? I appreciate it. Well, I, I like your jersey and hat because, you know what I'm saying? Dirty birds all day. Let's go. Every day. You look, I may or may not have planned to wear this because I knew we were talking to you today. So, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, David, thank you so much for hopping on with us. We really do appreciate it. My name's Ricky Hayes. This is my wife, Karina. And then we have Tony Lance. We all co-host the Challenge Fandom Podcast. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us. We're we're happy to talk with you. We were hoping we were going to talk with you next week, though. Yeah. Well, me too. Of course, I got to congratulate you guys on getting the 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 most one of the most famous individuals to ever uh, <laughs> be on the challenge, the guys to come on and, and speak with you guys for two and a half hours. Like, that is an amazing yeah. so. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I know, that, I know that took a lot of hard work, dedication, and you guys have to be an authentic court, uh, an authentic media for somebody like that to decide to be a little bit more vulnerable than they typically are. So appreciate you guys being those individuals. Oh, thank, thank you. you so we appreciate much. that. <laughs> Look, we we still don't believe that it actually happened. Like when we got the email saying, "Yeah, no, we're going to do this," I was like, "Oh my god!" Did somebody did somebody hack Everything his email stopped. or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, is Ashton Kutcher going to come around the corner in a second? We've been punked. <laughs> <You've> been punked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, David, first and foremost, I want to say dude, we're big fans. I've been watching you since your first season on Big Brother. I believe that was season twenty. Yeah. Um, you got the sh yeah the short end of the stick on oh, that one, and tough. and you were one of our early choices because just the way you seemed to come into the game, uh, we thought you were going to be a force. It just the cards didn't fall your way. Obviously, uh, seeing you the second go around on Big Brother, um, and then finding out some of yeah. the backstory about what you said behind it, it kind of adds a lot of light to that picture. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we saw you were going to be on the on the challenge we were stoked and because we all thought that this is a a, a content or a, a game that is much more suited to your skill set than big brother yeah uh agreed i think <laughs> the question to where 
you have to be beat to go home. There isn't some voting. People can't look at you and come up with a summary of who you are. Um, you know, the social anxiety that I experienced on the all stars and et cetera, you know, a little, little bit of that was gone. And, and, and this experience doing the crazy stuff that we do facing fears, mindset, all these different things you have to tap into, like you just mentioned, really went into my tool belt of what I can do. And um, even though I had doubters throughout the entire season, I, I proved a lot of people wrong and even yeah. proved myself wrong in some instances. Absolutely. I mean, look, it, it, to be honest, if if it weren't for some of the people on Love Island, we would have probably had you as the most surprising player because yeah. nobody had you winning, you know, a daily or winning an elimination going into this. And then for you to go out and you didn't just win your daily, you and Desi smashed that daily compared to everybody yeah. else. So they, they don't show this part, but let me tell you about that daily. When me and Desi were walking back to where people were standing, everybody was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> cricket like yeah, yeah. it was one of the most amazing because i'm just like oh that means you've been talking shit you talk shit you talk shit people <laughs> cheer for you when they got your back and when they like you when they enjoy yeah. you but they're quiet when you surprise them yeah and i oh, knew yeah. we were walking back that oh yeah okay y'all all scared i loved it yes love it, love it. <laughs> so good so um <laughs> I know we've got a finite amount of time. Usually we like to do like, you know, like 90 minute interviews where we do a deep dive. Don't have that ability now, but hopefully we can, you know, have you back here in the future and, and, and do that Absolutely. deep dive. Cause we, we both know that you have a hell of a story to tell and yeah. it deserves to be told. Um, but with that being said, first question I have about, uh, last night's episode was how long were you guys actually on that truck for? Like how long was that, that portion of your competition? Too short. It was like three minutes. Oh wow. wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Gee, so some some people were really flying on that one then and then that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, me and Tyson went first. We were the test dummies. Uh, Tyson right. said yeah. it on the interview. It, it of all the challenges, you know, order order of challenges do matter. Going first or last does affect how long you're out waiting, going first kind of people seeing the strategy behind it. This particular one to where you literally are blindly putting peg to determine your fate on how well you do gave people after us the ultimate platform or, or kind of stage to do a little bit better. So to be so close to a finale, to, to have it in on chance of a name draw, um, that, that was unfortunate. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, I mean, obviously we know that you were, you were close with Enzo when you found out that like it was going to be Enzo in the elimination. Was there any changing that? Like, was there any movement off of Enzo or it was Enzo straight time from when you were told right until when you went down to the arena? It was Enzo the entire time. Enzo got highly upset. I mean, he's crushing on everybody but me. Uh, yeah. You know, me and him, like me. So me and him know we're going at it. And that's my guy. So we we just kind of sat there and we just was like, you know, let's give him a show. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And, yeah. You know. I want you to fight for your kids. He's got family, kids watching at home. I'm fighting for my mom and my family. And, you know, it's, this is this is the situation. Now, I was upset. And I think we got saw a little bit of that. And it takes a lot for me to get upset. A lot. Like, I can yeah. take a lot before my emotions get control of me. And I got more upset because Enzo was hurt that he had to go against me. And ultimately, because Angela held most of the power in that decision, and knowing how me, Enzo, and Tyler went back to season of All Stars, Team Freeze, and how far we got, and and just that bond we had, like me and Enzo literally went to Argentina wearing bands because of Tyler. You know what I mean? Like that's probably yeah. influence he had on us. And when when Angela made that decision, I was just hurt by it. You know, I was just yeah. like, just in the previous challenge, I was literally trying to win because Alyssa and Angela were like, David, the Fab Five are coming for us. Like we need help. And I'm oh. like, okay, let me try to beat Danny in this. I'm going to try my best. And I got close. Now I'm trying to interrupt that. But I literally put my game to the side to try to help them. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we don't. Yeah. Here you go, Enzo. I was oh. like, all right. I'll see you later. Dang. That Jeez. sucks. Well, and that, that actually, that kind of answers my, my next question that I had was, um, there was a moment last night. I, I can't remember if it was a, a confessional or if you actually said it to Angela, but you had brought up, you know, that. You're BB, she's BB, Enzo's BB. So were you under the impression that everybody was still kind of playing within the show alliances? I was under the impression 
given that we're so close, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, where, where's the big game move here? This isn't a big game move. This was the safe move. And what I saw was Survivor having the influence, having the numbers. Yeah. That's why right. I, I was like, oh, this is Survivor. They're they're dominating us on a strategic level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. tough. Yeah, I guess that kind of goes into, I guess you weren't aware at the time of the alliance that Angela had with the Survivor guys at right. that point. I, I wasn't aware of it, but as soon as she, so when she said Enzo, I understood the strategy. As soon as she said it, I was like, "That's me," because guess yep. what? It would have been me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. you're not picking. And yeah, you're picking Enzo. But if the scenario was switching around in any other way, you would have been picking me too. So you can't sit here and be like, "Oh, you know, just win and come back," or you know, try to soften it up. Like, no, like you're literally throwing me in too. I can feel it. And yeah. with that in mind, like, you know, if I, if anything, I was, I felt loyal to Angela. I felt like I, in that instance of the last challenge, I tried to win to keep them safe. I didn't win. So I, that wasn't necessary, but, um, it's just, it's just hurt. It just sucked. And I, I got a chance. If I got a chance to play with some of these individuals again, I'll remember the strategy behind how people play. <laughs> and I've been oh, training yeah. this summer. So who knows what the future holds? Cause I, <laughs> I went into that thing out of shape. Not even really physically prepared. Mentally, I was prepared. But, I mean, if you follow me on IG, um, the game has changed physically. Oh, we've been watching. We yeah. see it. We oh, see yeah. the work you're putting in, man. And, <laughs> and, dude, I hope you get that chance to come back because I think you're going to kill at it, man, if you get yeah. that opportunity. Because that first year is always filling out how the game goes and how people are playing the game. And nobody else on the seasons played the game. So it's all a learning experience for you. Where the vets on, like, the flagship, they've seen these people year after year. They know how they're going to play the game. So they already have that experience. So I, I want to see you get that chance, that opportunity. Me too. And uh, keep in mind, although I was first out, I've always gotten considerably better throughout my experiences. Um, mm-hmm. Further in the game, better handling the game, emotions, the other things go. And I've never gone in as prepared as I am now if that call does happen. So I'll be curious to see what that unfolds look like. We've so, said it a couple of times too, that like... Ahead. If you remix, if you put this same group of 28 back in the house again, whole new ball game. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. It's going to be different every time. Oh, yeah. It, it, just from the experience people had, um, people that, you know, that were afraid, would they be more afraid or less afraid? Um, I mean, I, when you see it, it's crazy because I, I watched a good bit before going, right? You, you see the individuals that have done this year after year. Some of them, sometimes they freeze up, even though they've done some of the stuff over and over again they're just like you know what Mm -hmm. i can't do it this time and watching trivia literally just watching trivia i (laughs) felt my freaking heart beat out of my (laughs) head it was windy it's cold there's a trap door you know i can just talking about i can feel it right now and i'm like can i do that again i could if i have to but like that's part of the fear if i if i sign this thing that hey sign this waiver that you know shit could happen to you. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, what are we doing out here? Oh. <laughs> so kind of going into, uh, you know, this will probably lead into another question I have, but things that we don't always see, it looked like that there was a little bit of a conversation between you, Enzo, and TJ right before the match started. And Enzo kind of said, it is what it is. And then it seemed like it was a really harsh cut to you saying it is what it is. Was that all that happened or was there more going on in that scene? You know, I, I I had a sense of intensity every elimination um, where I'm just focused on performing and all the other stuff was just like fiddle. You know, I think we saw a little bit of that energy prior to me going in with the interview, me just cussing everybody out like I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so I think Enzo felt like he didn't want to go against me. And he was just kind of letting that emotion out like this sucks. And I'm mm. just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> you stand in the way of me making half a million. I'm sorry. You're you're no longer ends on my homie anymore. You're somebody that's in my way. Right. Um, so that's why you saw that. Like, it is what it is. Fuck it. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Then. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, now, I know, obviously, like you, you were tight with Enzo. We've talked about that. Were there other alliances that you had beyond like beyond Enzo with Big Brother a little bit, I know you said, but just was there anyone else across show lines? 
Um, so another individual I felt really good with, um, a couple of individuals actually, I felt good with the amazing race. Um mm. So let, let me explain a little bit of me and why certain people appeal to me. I've been an underdog many instances, both times I played a game, right? Camp comeback was a pure underdog moment. You are not even part of the game. Oh, yeah. All stars. I didn't even get the chance to watch it. CBS was like, no, you're not watching anything. You're a pure rookie. We're not even telling you this all-star season. I'm like, okay. And we saw how that played out, right? So wow. yeah. He you know, would happen there. And so coming into this game where I see amazing race, Leo, um kayla and then also desi just because we won together those are the other individuals i felt really tight with especially leo leo was the underdog given how the women were talking and treating him yes. and i knew how he felt being a little bit ostracized a little bit you know not getting the same cool treatment because we are playing in a competitive game but we do live together when we're not competing right. and I, I just would be in his corner saying yo like change this do this and Show them what you can do. When he almost went home, quick quick story. When he almost went home, he did stay, right? Mm-hmm. Guess what? He went into elimination. Yeah. So he had he had every reason to just be like, you know, forget this. I get to go home and help my businesses. I'm already in elimination, et cetera. And he comes to me. He's like, yo, somebody came over to me and tried to intimidate me. I think it was Kylan. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, guess what? Kylan is scared. Kylan yep. is showing fear. So Mm -hmm. your big story moment is you almost walked away, you lost a challenge, and now you beat somebody trying to bully you out of the game. Yeah, Leo the Lion, it's time to turn up, and that was my motivation to him to to beat to beat whatever he was going to face, and then to be in college, and that was a huge moment for me because I just felt like he was tapped out, and I, you know, I don't know if our, I don't know how much our conversation helped. I'm sure it did, kind of bring him back in and like, yo, prove everybody wrong. Right, that's what underdogs do. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. So I. We've noticed that throughout the season, um, we're not seeing there's a lot of stuff, obviously, that we don't see in the edit. Um, And I've noticed that a lot of what we are seeing is mainly just house stuff and challenge stuff. Was there anything that happened in the house, like fun or gameplay wise, that wasn't shown that you were kind of surprised wasn't in the edit? Um, We would have our we would have so we would have our nights out, um, just like on the regular season. After the challenge, we would go out and it was somber and good, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. mighty won, somebody lost. And we're now drinking, trying to figure out who's <laughs> going in, who feels comfortable, the dancing, the good time. So nobody got to really see that, which might have been good. Maybe they can't show some of that see some of that stuff on CBS Network TV. I know <laughs> there was some moments that for me, I'm just like, oh my God, please do not show. <laughs> Jamal, right? Jamal's my middle name. And I made this alternate character that didn't show at all called Jamal, who is a big flirt that gets lit, that has a good time. Um, so those are the moments we kind of miss out on. And then just us um, maybe playing around the house a little bit. Derek was a, was a huge, fun, funny. I mean, you say some of the interview stuff. He is one of the most hilariously authentic people I've met. And we didn't get to see him not in interviews around the house, just being himself. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. That's what we've kind of heard from a couple cool. different people that like their true character didn't really get a chance to shine through because yeah, you know, and and we get it. They have to edit a storyline of a week of footage into one episode. And, and there's it, so many people there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And you have to, you know, once you find out what's what's happening, how do you get the storyline to continue? You have to like show it throughout it. So right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, this one is a little bit more. of in regards to you, did you know about the challenge or a fan of the flagship before coming on the 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 CBS version? So I knew about it, and in in prior to All Star season, there was an opportunity for me to go on. Oh, um, that I, given the compensation and what I was doing full time at the time, I was going to decline. Yeah, uh, it just didn't make sense, and I wasn't. And I, I didn't feel physically ready. It was at you know COVID. Um, right. Right. Then the All-Star came along and they, they offered a good, you know, compensation to go in and do that. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, but so I was aware of it. I knew of it. I knew Fessy, Casey. I knew people from BB who did it, Josh. Um, I talked to Fessy a lot about it. And it seemed like a cool experience that I hope maybe the stars would align for me to do. Um, I'm grateful that things worked out. Let me tell you, like, I was not supposed to be on this. I didn't have a passport. My mom literally visited me for Christmas. And she wanted to go to the post office to some find some toaster oven she sent to me a year before. I'm like, mine's not there. 
She's like, no, 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 please. Let's go look. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's, we're going to the post office. And I'm just like, well, I, I need to get a passport for this show. I don't know if I'll do it or not, but let's see if they'll give me a passport. And yeah. Took care of everything. If my mom didn't make me go check the <laughs> other she sent me, I would not be talking to you guys right now. That's how oh. close I was to just <laughs> not being there. Well, shout out to your mom for getting you on here because yeah. we're glad we yeah. she did, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. I need to call her after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony, go ahead because we're I know we're running short on time. Yeah, totally. What one of the things we really want to know is what is what is your personal highlight from your time on the show? I mean, obviously, there are a lot of them. You did amazing. But is there mm-hmm. one thing that absolutely stands out for you? Um, the elimination win. Yeah. Um, that was the, our fourth challenge. It was trivia. So that's our like our second or third week there. I felt the doubters in the house. You can feel the energy when people doubt you, just how they talk to yeah. you, how they respond, how they, you know. And mm-hmm. when I won that, that's why I kept yelling, put some respect on my name. I would mm-hmm. fan it to people standing up there. I, yes. I wanted to know, yeah. put some respect on my name. And yeah. uh, that was my highlight moment. That shifted my whole reality experience. I even told Justine this, like, you know, towards the end, I was like, you know, that win shifted my whole mindset around reality. Um, I didn't have the basic experience up until that moment. So um, that was my redemption. And Camp Comeback continues. Shout out to Ovi. You love it. Love yeah, it, yeah, man. I love it. Um, so one thing I wanted to ask, and this is probably our final question is, um, given the opportunity, uh, if they asked you back, would you do another season of the challenge? Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> easy, easy. Yes. Given that I am physically getting into the best shape of my life at yes. 32 years young, I've learned about recovery, macro energy, just, I've learned so much about myself mentally, physically, even socially, um, started coaching, um, CrossFit just to help my social engagement on an authority, uh, not an authoritative role, but just in a leadership way of h- how to understand and be fluid between people who think they know what they're doing and people who don't know what they're doing, and how to switch that one and off. So I've invested um, a lot of energy and time into building myself for myself, but also for the best version of me in case that call does happen. So I can win. Yeah, getting tapped that. on the shoulder for something you were specifically chosen for. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And being ready. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, I'm I'm officially done with questions. Yeah, I I think we're I think we're good. I think we're about out of time anyway. So, but um, David, I want to I want to thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Like I said, we really do want to have that conversation. I know um, we have to wait a little bit to make that happen. But if you are game, we would love to have you on for a more in depth conversation. Yeah, totally. I, I think there is a story to tell from the beginning of my experience um yes that people don't really uh, mind you after my experiences early on i b- didn't do cameos i declined all because i just didn't want to talk about it yeah. and then after that elimination when i think it's something worth talking about because i think this story will will resonate with people not just in reality about just about you know not letting certain moments define you and continue yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah yes yes, yes absolutely <laughs> and you know what dude i don't i i don't know if you hear this enough but you did a hell of a job. You fucking took out the dude that a lot of people had picked as one of the top contenders to come over. Yep. And you smoked him in that competition. Killed it. Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. you know, our, I I'm, figure, you know, physically my hat's not off to you, but figuratively my hat's off to you. <laughs> uh, David, you're, you're one of my favorite, uh, favorite cast members I've seen on here this season, as well as on Big Brother. And uh, dude, we just want to thank you so much and, you know, wish you nothing but future success on whatever those endeavors may be guys i appreciate everybody i appreciate the kind words um also congratulations again on the recent podcast with ct the legend and then also hey. special shout out to the dirty bird outfit i'm like <laughs> changed the whole vibe of me today i was like oh shit dirty birds <laughs> <And I> was- <laughs> hey man i appreciate it absolutely and best of luck this week because i know we're going against the saints so <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <the> same, baby. <laughs> All right, David. Thank you so much, sir. Thank Rise you. Up. Doodly do. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. I'm not doing that. <laughs> wow. That was. God, I I didn't think I could like David more than I do now. Uh, yeah. 
gosh, I just, I just don't get it. He's so cool. He's so, he's yeah. so cool. He's such a good talker. He was awesome to sit here and chat with and meet. Like, I just, again, I know that we were talking about this at the end of, of the intro before we hopped in with David, but I just don't get why he didn't get more. Cause I would understand if he was like boring or something like, you know what I mean? But he's not, he, and he has a story to tell. I just don't get it. I don't get it. But you know what? Thank you. Thank you, Bunim and Murray and CBS One for bringing him on because it was an absolute joy to watch David play this season. And two, thank you for not properly telling his story because you know what? We're going to do it for you. We're going to. And also thank you to his mom (laughs) for making him go to the post office. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to all the moms of the challengers. We don't know what they like. They've got that underlying hand of maybe you should do this. Perhaps. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you should try it, you know? So, no, that yeah. was that was cool. And oh, my gosh, like, <laughs> I think this was the first episode we've done since we released the CT thing that I was like, I was literally like, OK, we're not going to talk about CT, the CT interview this time because we just keep hammering the shit out of it. Right. And I still have a crap ton of freaking content from the CT interview and stuff we've made and whatever to put out. And I've just been kind of trying to slow it down. and. First thing we do, we hop on and he starts talking about the CT. I was just like, okay, well, at least we didn't have to, <laughs> we didn't bring it up this time. But I thought that was so sweet. Like, was really uh, nice. I just, dude, like, I literally had like chills, like goosebumps listening to him talk about, you know, how just listening to him talk about it and how impressed he was with it. And it was just, it was really cool to hear somebody say, you know, the things that we see and that we live through, the the work that we put in for it and all of that. And it's just cool that somebody sees that. And I, I just wanted to say again that, David, if you're listening to this, you don't know what that meant to us. We really appreciate you taking the time to say that. Yeah, it's I'm going to be honest. It still gives me that weird feeling that when somebody knows who we are because they've listened to us. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. like, people listen to us like we really just do this for fun. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. nothing else to get together a couple of times a week. <laughs> yeah, is, exactly. Yeah. We get to talk our favorite TV shows, talk shit about it. And then we hop on the following night after the exit interviews and really do a deep dive <laughs> of shit talking. <laughs> and then every once in a while, we interview some challengers and try to get get you some information. The fact yeah. that a challenger knew about us from interviewing another challenger and not because we tagged them in social media no. or anything like that, but just knew about us. I mean, it's. It's wild to me. It feels like there's like a parallel universe or something crazy. But yeah, no. So I I just wanted to say thank you again for that, because like, again, that means the world. It it does. It means the world when people notice those kinds of things, because it's easy to overlook, you know, the work and, you know, think, oh, they just got lucky or whatever. But no, we we really did put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort into you know, getting CT. And so it was really cool that somebody noticed that. So thank you, David. Not to completely disbar what Karina just said, but we also got lucky too. So I mean, yes, there, we, there was, <laughs> there's that. always, there's always luck involved guys. There's always luck involved, especially when you're dealing with people like CT. But I am just saying like, it wasn't like we just woke up one day and was like, Oh, CT wants it. Like it, we put in time, we yeah, put in did. effort, we put in work. And okay. It's nice for people to re- recognize that. So thank you. Enough of CT. Thank you, yes. David, for bringing it up. We appreciate the the free plug. We really do. But like I said, hearing his answers and how he viewed this, oh my gosh. it makes me like him even more. I mean, like, look, that's got to be one of the hardest things to do. We've seen it last year on the flagship with Casey and Nani having to go against each other. But either going against a significant other or going against a true friend in an elimination, yeah, that's yeah. got to be one of the hardest things, and especially such a physically grueling elimination. Yeah, it wasn't like they and that and that was the other thing that I was thinking the whole time, right? It's not like you know where, like, <clears throat> for example, when uh, I believe it was Dirty Thirty or whatever, when they threw in Jenna versus Kayla and they had to climb that wall, right? And they were each on opposite sides of the wall and they had to dump the paint or whatever the hell it was at the top over onto the other one, right? They couldn't see each other. They weren't looking at each other. They weren't tackling and attacking each other. Like in this scenario with with Enzo and David, they were head to head. They were looking in each other's eyes. They were very well aware who they were going against the entire time. And those boys left everything on that field. I know we didn't uh, yeah. really we, I know we didn't really dive into the elimination portion with with David, which we should have, but again, we just don't get a lot of time on these um but Dude, they left everything that they had yeah. on that on that field in that ring right there. And to do such a legendary elimination like balls in, 
It's like, I know most of the fans are like hall brawl. I like balls in and pole wrestle. Like to me, that's the challenge. Those are the legendary eliminations, right? Those are the ones that you can track back to like early, early, early stages of the challenge. And so for David to be able to compete in something like that, but then also have to go against his friend, like uh, all the emotions that he must have been going through. You know what I mean? Like it just, it, it was tough, but it was also a really awesome elimination to watch because, because they did give it up their all and they didn't let the fact that they were going against their friend, you know, take away from their performance. And, you know, I just, I really appreciated that. Well, here's my thing is I saw a bunch of people saying like, oh, David quit. No, David didn't fucking no. quit. David was gassed out. Yeah. That's why he tried to shoot that ball in the final round because he knew he wouldn't have the energy to either defend and play offense. And for those people that are thinking, oh, he didn't gas out. I want you to go get your best friend and tell them you want to wrestle nonstop for 10 fucking minutes going full out. And you tell me you're not just and, burnt. And not just wrestle. I want you to put on all the pads. I want you to put on the helmet, okay? And I want you to do it in fucking sand. Beach sand. Beach, beach sand. sand. Not, yeah. not like the little sand out in your fucking backyard. Beach sand. Go do that. And then come tell me that he didn't gas out and he gave up. Because no. Like watching that man, he could barely walk away after he lost the elimination and TJ thanked him and, you know, sent him on his way. He could barely walk out of the damn arena thing. Like he Neither gave- one of them had anything left. Exactly. And as as a competition fan, more so than even just a challenge fan, you can t- ask Karina. She'll tell you, I'll, I'll watch two turtles racing just for the competition <laughs> of it. Um, but Facts. you can't ask any more of two competitors than to leave it all out like they did. Yeah. And yep. to me, that might have been the best elimination we've seen this season as far as from just a display of competitiveness and athleticism because there's not a lot of people that could go you're doing 10 matchups yep exactly. five times on offense five times on defense which i also thought seemed a bit a, a bit excessive i thought they usually did three rounds of balls in no they it's but, usually first it's it's best best out it's of five. like best out of five or best two out of three or anything like that but i mean really it ended up being the same thing because it was one and one for a really long time and then enzo got two yeah, right. at that last one. And, so, yeah. and 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 that's my theme is David didn't quit. David was so gassed out. And once you hit that level of being gassed out, you don't think straight. It's not no. as simple as, oh, go after the ball. It's if I don't hold on to this guy, he's going to pick it up way before I do. And it's game over yeah. anyways. Well, especially because Enzo was on top of him. And I would also like to just point out that, yes, David is in, you know, is in really good shape and he's, you know, an athlete and all of that. But so is Enzo. Like, he's a big boy. That's a big boy to have laying on top of you when you're freaking exhausted and you're trying to get up and you're trying to get to the other side of the ring and you're trying to get this ball. Like, that's a big boy. So, like, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm not with the fans talking about how David gave up. I think that's crap. He did not give up. That man left everything he had in that ring. And win or lose, I appreciate what he gave us because they did. Yeah. They gave us a show. And he even said that they had talked to each other and they were like, look, I understand. Like, I love you. You love me, blah, 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 blah. But let's give these people a fucking show. And you did. So yeah. thank you. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, the last thing I'm going to say about David, though, is probably one of the most genuine guys I've ever had the opportunity to have an interaction with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He is. Um, it's. There are some challenge competitors out there that we've seen on TV and seen in live interviews that are very different than the people that we sit down and talk with when it's just a Zoom meeting and we're yeah. putting out an unplugged. Yeah. And you can tell that there is a very certain character that they bring to the table when they're on television or the camera's on. Right. David yeah. seems very much not that at all. He seems like the person you get on the show is a person you get in real life is a person you meet on a Tuesday. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. and I appreciate that level of realness being brought through. Absolutely. I also like the fact that in the three seasons that we've seen David, two on Big Brother and one on The Challenge, I really don't remember him backstabbing or doing anyone super fucking dirty. He's a pretty straightforward player, and I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hearing that story about last week's daily, though, about how he was trying to win so he could help Angela and Alyssa. 
I don't know. That one, I was just like, oh, that kind of sucks. Because, I, I mean, I'm still, like, super happy that Danny won and got qualified for the for the final and stuff. But it was just like, oh, man, like, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that we just, we don't know anything yeah. about. And I just wanted to use that as as an example to remind people that these are edits and we are only seeing so much of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, Sorry, Karina's getting, a, getting call a call from Holland. From South Holland, Netherlands. Seems legit. You should probably answer it. Right? Like, that is so weird. I mean, it tells me it's a spam risk, but. Whatever. That was really strange. Sorry next for time, that. <laughs> next time they call, answer the phone and say, Kippen Nugan. What does that mean? Chicken fucker. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know what that is? My grandmother was Dutch. Oh, and she knew the bad words. Yep. Look, there's only two things in this world <laughs> that I won't tolerate. And that's one, people who are intolerable of other people's cultures. And the second, the Dutch. <laughs> so you can't tolerate yourself? I hate myself. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no. Anyways, enough about me. It, it, with this with David, I mean, look, I don't really have too much to add. I think, yeah. I think the exit interview speaks for itself. Yes. But what I will say is I really enjoyed David. I think he brought something to the show that not a lot of people saw. Um, and I hope he gets an opportunity to come back and do it again because I would definitely want to see him uh, with a little bit more uh, a little bit more experience under his belt. Yes, I definitely yeah. want to see him again. I would love to have him on the show. I would love to help him tell his story in a in a genuine and authentic way. Um, and you know, I just again, yeah, I, I know I've said this bunch, but I I hope they call him. I hope they call him again, knowing that they had actually called him prior to Big Brother All Stars. Gives me hope that they will probably call him again, um, whether it be for, you know, if they end up doing a USA season two or, you know, he gets called for flagship. I don't really care which one, um, but I definitely want to see him play this game again, because I think like his first time playing the game, he damn near made it to the final. He took out one of the biggest guys. He won a daily like he, you know, participated in one of the most legendary eliminations in challenge history. He you gave know, us and, a hell and of a show. Gave us a hell of a show. And he almost fucking won. Like he was yeah. that damn close. So like, bring David back. I, I will accept nothing less. Tony, do you have some? Because I'm actually going to do a call out here in a second. But I want you to to. I it's going to get it's going to get aggressive. So I'm okay. going to go ahead and let you go. First. Okay. Well, I'll go first then. Yeah. I just wanted to say that like David is a perfect example of why USA should be an hour and a half because with and I say this with absolute love for the flagship. It's why we're here. But the flagship has an hour and a half. And a lot of the times you're like, this could be an hour because yeah. it's drama and not necessarily drama that then relates to why somebody's an elimination. Right. Whereas USA, because they're all new to it and because they're so they come from shows that are so heavily uh, strategized that it could be an hour and a half and it could be an hour and a half of strategy and right. of relationships that you're not seeing and alliances that you're not seeing. And David's a prime example of that, of like how much stuff went on behind the scenes that wasn't showcased like him with, like you said, with Leo and like his relationship with Enzo and everything like that. How like it absolutely, that? absolutely could be an hour and a half and mm -hmm. they would not have trouble finding footage. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100%. I, I, I do agree with that. So he, my only reservation to that is that we recap these episodes and we already have trouble keeping our episodes under two hours with it being an hour. And I'm like, if they did hour and a half episodes, we'd, we'd have three hour <laughs> recaps. But at the same time, I do think it would have been helpful, especially on this this like first season. And I keep speaking about this show as if there's going to be multiple seasons. That's just a hope of mine because I, for one, am really enjoying USA. Um, but I, I do think that especially because a lot of these players, unless you watch their previous shows, you don't know anything about them. And I think yeah. that that extra 30 minutes would throughout the season would have allowed for us to get to know people a little bit better, um, you know, would have allowed for more confessionals, more fun. You know, these like him, his alternate personality, Jamal, like I want to see that stuff. Okay? Right. I don't yeah. want to see I don't want to see people fighting over boys and all this catty bullshit. I want to see funny stuff like that. Give me. Like what they did in All Stars, right? Like that the way that they they portrayed All Stars, especially like 
those first few episodes of like All Stars 3 and stuff was like amazing because you got a little bit of everything. You got the gameplay, you got the challenges, you got the eliminations, and you also got like the house parties and the fun shit they were doing and, you know, Tyler dressing up and like just I, I want to see that kind of stuff so bad. Yep. So I do agree that that, that would have been a, something that would have, I think, contributed to the overall vibe of the show if they had done that from the beginning of the season. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've seen this float around a couple of different places online. I've even seen fellow cast members uh, or Ooh. cast members talk about this in regards to physical eliminations and how Ugh. how bad they are, that they shouldn't do physical eliminations, that they're unfair because the biggest guy always is going to win. That tells me right there that you don't watch the fucking show. Yeah. Because I can name off one right off the top of my head, which was Abram smashing Brad and balls in, and Abram is smaller than Brad. Yes. I can think of Darrell smashing Zach in a pole wrestle, and Zach has him by about 40 pounds and about three inches. What about Darrell taking out fucking bananas and a balls in? Like, that, like yeah. there's just... I, yeah. Derek taking out Joss in a pole wrestle. Look, and and, and I, I'm just gonna say his name, James. I understand your perspective because you you saw this and you you like the ones in the beginning that are strategy and puzzle related and endurance, and those are more suited to what you guys do on your show. But this is what makes the challenge different is because you're never going to get a hall brawl and survivor or big brother or the amazing race. Right. You're never going to get a pole wrestle and you're never going to get balls in. And that is something that is special to the challenge. Yes. So I understand you don't like it, but understand that this is, that is a pillar. Those are three pillars that hold the challenge up above all these other reality shows Agreed. because you get that physical contact. I, I do also want to point out on top of that, that, like, if you go back to, um, gosh, what was that? I believe it was Double Agents. There were, that season was just fucking dripping in physical eliminations. We had two female hall brawls. We had two male hall brawls. We had pole wrestles. We had all, uh, like, tons of physical one-on-one uh, -on -one eliminations. This season, we got the hall brawl. We've gotten the balls in. And we've seen a um, preview preview in the like season preview, whatever. There's a little clip of two girls rolling around wrestling over a pole. So I'm assuming that will come into play next week. Um, but there haven't been that many like physical eliminations. And, you know, and this is kind of where where I, I find it funny because it's like you can't ever make everybody happy. Right. Because all season the fans have been throwing a fucking fit about how many Bit, uh, puzzle eliminations there are. They're all mm -hmm. puzzles. They're all puzzles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now, like, people are upset because it's like, oh, they're all physical. They're all physical. When really, like, we've gotten two physical eliminations this season. Maybe three. Two, right? I think. But anyway, yeah, whatever. two or three. Not very many. Um, you know, they definitely focus this USA season more on, like, puzzles and strategy type eliminations and endurance eliminations. And, and that is what everyone comes from, too. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that the challenge did a good job. You know, this season did a really good job of like finding that balance between, you know, let's kind of try to cater to what these other shows are used to and what they're capable of. And as we get down to the wire, down to the end, we're going to find out what these people are really made of. And if you can handle TJ's eliminations, yeah. you can handle TJ's final and so I like the way that they did this, saving the physical eliminations for the end of the season, you know, kind of stacking up on the puzzles in the beginning. And again, you're never going to make everybody happy. Somebody's always going to have an issue with something that they do in the challenge, somebody that they bring on in the challenge. Um, but me personally, I think this was the best way for them to incorporate a little bit of each show and still keep it true to the challenge for us, you know, especially for us, like, longtime OG fans that are are have been watching for so long you know and love this show and love it for the things that like Rick said make it different from the other competition shows yeah and and I don't say like hey the challenge has physical so it's up above everything else I really think these no. shows are on equal playing fields now they're different it's, it's, it's like apples different, and oranges but yeah you know? it, but it's what makes the challenge the challenge right just like in Survivor you know having the the 
the pre-competition to see who's going to get the rewards is part of Survivor. Getting the food or getting the Applebee's cheeseburger that gives you an advantage in the in the tribal, you know, or the tribal elimination. Big Brother, you know, like how pissed would they be if Otev didn't show up in Big Brother? That oh is a God. staple of Big Brother. You I'd know what I mean? Pissed. And and I I know there's probably staples of Amazing Race that I'm I know nothing about, but <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and trash them because they're not physical because that's what that show's about. Right? Challenge is about exactly what it is a fucking challenge, and sometimes it's a physical challenge, and you have to outpower or out strategize the person you're going against. And just because Enzo was bigger doesn't mean shit. David could have very easily beaten David him. David was whooping his ass the whole yeah. time until he just, he gassed out at that last one. He couldn't freaking run that ball in. Yeah. So he shot it. And that, I mean, that wasn't smart. I even turned to Rick and I was like, oh, bro. I was like, no, never don't, sh- never don't works. shoot the ball. It but never it would have been works. amazing if it did. <laughs> it I saw be. it and like the trajectory just wasn't quite doing it. But when yeah. he first shot it, I was like, and they started to slow-mo it. Like this could be pretty damn awesome it would have been yeah. crazy i think i've only seen that work one time if i'm remembering correctly and it was a female's elimination uh i, I want to say it was like it was like emily and i don't know i, I can't remember exactly i, who I remember was. that but, but i've I, seen it one work one time where somebody shot the ball and it fucking went into the into the the barrel correct um, me if i'm wrong but that didn't make a difference that person still lost from rem- if i'm remembering this i right. don't i don't think so because i honestly want to say it was either like emily or laurel or cara and they were just whooping the ass of the other little tiny girl they were going against yeah. regardless so they weren't even trying to wrestle or they were just fucking shooting the ball but um yeah i just i, I agree with you um and you know personally i love the physical eliminations i'm mm-hmm. glad we didn't get 1600 hall brawls this season uh <laughs> that's when I, I get frustrated with it is not so much that they're there but the frequency of like slight variations of the exact same thing yes um i'm all, i i'm always much more interested if there's a mix of physical and like puzzles and stuff like that all through it mm-hmm. rather than front load puzzles back load physical yeah so like there there is like a, a better balance than how it's been distributed this season especially because like by having a lot of puzzle based ones first you're potentially going to lose some of your people that would do better at strict physical ones later That's exactly. and then the people that did really well on puzzles may not do so hot with the physical but if they were lined up differently then they could have fared better Right. Well, and and I get it. Like, it's hard to do a pole wrestle on teams, right? Yeah. It, especially yeah. when they're co-ed teams. It's, it's hard, hard to do. A, yeah. Or it's hard to do a, a, a hall brawl on co-ed teams. And it's hard to do a balls in on co-ed teams. So I get them waiting until the end till it was singles. And that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But I do think there could have been an even distribution of, you know, a little bit better mix. I um, agree. With that being and that said, comes from losing two at a time as well. Like that right. comes from losing teams versus having it be teams that go in, but being a guy's day versus a girl's day. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with guys. um, With that being said, I really don't have too much more to add to this. Mm -hmm. I think my closing statement will be, uh, I think David is probably one of the most underestimated people we've seen on the challenge and And underrated and underrated. And it's a tragedy and he needs another season to come back to prove everybody why he's as good as we all think he is. I'm going to second that statement. <laughs> I like that. I will third it. Third it. Well, <laughs> I'm glad we're all on the same page. If for it was once. a page, we'd all be on the same paragraph. Yeah. Um, with that being said, for myself, Ricky Hayes, my beautiful wife, Karina Hayes, Tony, stats, and fucking info, Lance, coming in hot all the time. <laughs> we want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this exit interview. And if you haven't had enough of us yet, Go find our recap from last week or wait about 24 hours and our recap for episode 10 will be out. Yes. And then we also have Naya coming out on Monday. So keep an eye out for that. Naya yes. unplugs another two and a half hour, uh, you know, discussion about everything. Literally everything. You guys are definitely want to catch that one. So keep also find out some tea about the upcoming season of 38 from Naya. Mm. Mm. You're going to have to stay tuned <laughs> to find out. Anyways, guys, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. And as always, if you get a chance, go rate us five stars. If you rate us less than that, we are inclined to think you're a hater. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Later. I guess I should have done the tip of the hat since you do the salute, but we'll we'll figure it out (laughs) next time. Anyways, guys, bye. Later. (laughs) 